23 minutes to nine. Scientific research and testing on animals is always a controversial and often an emotive subject. Now a comprehensive review into what primates go through has reported that there is no evidence to prove the existence of cumulative suffering over a period of time, although it did find significant welfare issues in the treatment of the primates. Professor John Pickard chaired the committee behind the report. He's head of neurosurgery at Cambridge University. The way we normally label animal experiments is as mild, moderate or severe, and they really refer simply to single procedures. The problem arises that there's no good structure for looking at experiments that may go on for years in which you repeat various procedures that by themselves are either mild or moderate. It's how you then add that up. And the assumption has been that that must accumulate suffering. And what did you find? We found that in the majority of animals that just wasn't true, that the, the level of suffering was not greater than that of moderate alone. How do you know that? Well, we set up a wide-ranging engagement, including animal protection agencies. We did a questionnaire study which involved 234 monkeys, recruited data from 10 years and 13,000 data points, and looked very carefully at each component of the lifetime experience. So we went all the way from looking at when and how they were weaned from mum, all the way through their lifetime. And I'm looking at every single step in that pathway and assessing it and adding it up. It was clear that a number of repeated procedures did not add up to the level of severity, which is otherwise defined. So if you look... To to be really clear on this, you are talking about animals. Your task was to investigate the suffering of animals. I mean, there are many questions whether we can ever really know for sure what the animals go through. Absolutely. But how can you be sure that looking through all these bits of data, you can say definitively that they don't suffer cumulatively over a long period of time? Well, in terms of looking at their general well-being, things like body weight, uh, looking at their behaviour, and there are ways of looking at abnormal behaviour in primates, and looking at the way in which they perform the tasks. So these animals, on an almost daily basis, are playing with computer games on a touchscreen. And if they were really unhappy, they wouldn't be able to do those sort of tasks. Essentially, we shouldn't worry so much about, about the suffering think, of primates. I think this report will help to reassure the general public that there are not awful things going on in, in primate laboratories. If after this, experiments are classified less severely, does that actually open the way to more testing on animals? No. Nobody wants the label of severe. The animals don't want it, the general public don't want it, the people who look after the animals don't want it, and the scientists don't want it. Because if you've got a severe label, that means that you are allowed by law to actually do very severe things. And everybody involved wants to limit the level of severity to moderate. That means that you are constrained. As soon as you begin to even go anywhere near going above the moderate level, then the experiment stops. So perversely, putting a severe label on an experiment is, is less protective than putting moderate on the, on the experiment. But this is a report that was done by scientists, and it suits scientists, doesn't it? I mean, the the findings essentially will allow more experiments to take place without these worries about cumulative suffering coming into it. You clearly haven't met the members of my working group. There are a very diverse range of people on that report, some from the welfare end, some from the scientific end, and some in the middle of the spectrum. And they were all very sceptical, and we had many debates We're not saying there will be a 100% consensus. What we're putting into the public domain for the first time is a very transparent, very comprehensive and independent review of an awful lot of data that was not just not available before. And it's up for people in the general public to look at that data and assess it for themselves. Nothing's been hidden. And that was Professor John Pickard, who chaired the committee behind the report. On the line now is Jared Bailey, the scientific advisor for the British Union for the Abolition of Vivisection. What do you think of the findings? Uh, Good morning. Uh, The BUAB, um, as you might expect, profoundly uh, disagrees with the findings. We're we're astounded by them, uh, to be honest. Um, The Home Office that regulates animal experiments in this country um, has routinely underestimated the severity um, of such experiments, neurological experiments uh, on monkeys. Uh, And we really think that uh, the the findings of this report are only going to exacerbate and perpetuate that. Um, It seems uh, preposterous to anyone with a, a modicum of common sense 
sense that uh, not factoring in the lifetime experience of a monkey uh, that's lived in a lab and undergone experiments previously um, is is uh, not not going to give you the full picture of the severity of anything but, you propose to do to you, that monkey. But is your disagreement from a position of knowledge? Because they are saying that the, the people who did this report are saying that they looked at 13,000 data points from 234 monkeys and, and the data came over a 10 year period so they could see the animals recovering in between experiments, they could see their behaviour and they could make a judgement about their well-being. Well, I think to say that uh, monkeys continue to play computer games as evidence that they're not suffering um, is, is incredible. That wasn't all he said, things like uh, the it, body weight, the, it the wasn't behaviour. A, a, but there is, uh, as well as this being common sense, anyone who's taken a, a dog to the vet will realise that previous experience makes that a stressful, ex more stressful experience for the dog. There is scientific evidence. It's been shown that monkeys uh, do suffer due to their anticipation of painful procedures based on past experiences, as well as uh, just laboratory confinement, lack of agency and social interactions. That's been acknowledged. Monkeys do have long memories and do respond with fe uh, fearful behaviour um, to, what, to what's gone before. And that has to be incorporated uh, into any um, assessment of, of future uh, severity of future one experiments. Of thing, well, one of the things the, re the report is saying is that if we were to accept cumulative suffering as an idea, then what ends up happening is that a primate could be prematurely euthanized because there's a judgment made that it just can't cope any longer. And what the report is saying is that is just not necessarily the case. Well, I thought it was interesting to hear that um, you know no one wants uh, su substantial severity classifications. Well, of course they don't, because substantial severity classifications mean that it, you have to jump through uh, higher, more difficult hoops to get your experiments licensed. That's why they don't want um, higher severity classifications. They don't want to be associated with <laughs> carrying out severe experiments on animals. Well, of course they don't, because the public uh, don't want that. That's been shown by uh, by many opinion polls. The vast majority, over three quarters of the the public don't want these experiments to take place. Um, but the, the truth is uh, that when done objectively and rationally, um, neurological experiments on monkeys in which uh, there's parts of their skulls and spines are removed, they're immobilized in restraint chairs for hours on end, for days on end, they're deprived of water, um, so they strive for it as a reward uh, to be trained to do certain tasks. These things are um, substantial, uh, substantially severe and okay. um, they have to be honest about this. Jared Bailey, thank you very much.